So finding the limiting or excess reagents. Sometime in the question, we have the gases. The gases are reacting with each other. For questions which involve a gas is given off, it is very easy because we don't have to get the moles. We can simply take the ratio of the volume for gases. So as in this question, alkanes are generally unreactive and their reaction include a combustion, substitution and cracking. The complete combustion of an alkane gives carbon dioxide and water. 10 cm cube of butane. Why butane? Because four carbon are there, butane. And the single bond is there. That's why it is in. Mixed with 100 cm cube of oxygen, which is in excess. So they already mentioned oxygen is in excess or oxygen is more than enough. The mixture is ignited. What is the volume of unreacted oxygen left? And what is the volume of carbon dioxide formed? So how we can work out, so we can, whenever, remember, gases are involved, when gases are reacting with each other, we can take the ratio of the volume and the ratio of the volume will be same as the ratio of the equation. So to know what volume of oxygen left. So first what we will do, we'll find how much oxygen will react. So we have the equation C4H10, which is butane. It is reacting with oxygen, O2. So what is the ratio between butane? If one molecule of a butane, it will be six whole number, one by two, or we can say 6.5 moles of oxygen. So ratio between them is one is to 6.5. So one, if we have one molecule, it will react with 6.5 molecules of oxygen. So if we have 10 cm cube of butane, and again, here we don't have to convert the unit because our final answer should be in centimeter cube as they mentioned. So one is to 6.5 is the ratio. So if we have 10 cm cube of oxygen, how, if we have 10 cm cube of butane, how much oxygen will react X? So we cross multiply. So it will be 65 cm cube of oxygen reacted. So ratio is one is to 6.5. If 10 cm cube of butane is there, which is a limiting reagent, so how much oxygen will react? X cm cube of oxygen will react. So this will be 65 cm cube of oxygen is reacted. But in the question, we want to find how much volume of oxygen left, not the reacted. So total was 100. And out of 165 cm cube is reacted. So how much will be left? So it will be 100 minus 65, which is equals to 35. CMQ. Is it uh, clear the first part, how we work out how much oxygen will be there? Yes, sir, clear. Because the total oxygen was 100 CMQ and using a ratio, we work out that out of 100, 65 CMQ will react. So if 65 CMQ react, how much unreacted will be there? That is equals to 35. Then volume of the carbon dioxide. So always we use a limiting reagent to find the product. So limiting reagent, as they already mentioned, butane, oxygen is in excess. Oxygen is more than enough. So butane is a limiting reagent. So we'll take a ratio of the limiting reagent, the volume of gas of a limiting reagent to the product which we want to find. So we are finding carbon dioxide. So the ratio is one is to four. If we have one molecule of butane, we'll have four molecules of carbon dioxide. So if you have 10 cm cube of butane, how much carbon dioxide will be there? X cross multiply. So this X will be equal to 40 cm cube. So the volume of the carbon dioxide will be equal to 40 cm cube. Why we did not use oxygen to get the carbon dioxide? The reason is because oxygen is in excess, excess reagent, they are not completely reacting. That's why we don't find the product from excess reagent. We always use a limiting reagent to find the final product. A question related to limiting an excess reagent. One piece of marble is 0 0.3 grams was added to 5 cm cube of hydrochloric acid of concentration 1 mole per dm cube. Which reagent is in excess and give a reason? 
So mass of one mole or molecular mass or molar mass is given, which is 100. First, we have to find the moles of calcium carbonate. So from because we have the mass here, so how to get the moles from the mass? The formula moles equals mass in gram divided by molar mass. So mass in gram is 0 0.3 and the molar mass of calcium carbonate is given 100. So 0.3 divided by 100 will give us 0 0.003 moles of calcium carbonate. To get the moles of HCl, we have the volume of HCl and we have the concentration. Whenever acid alkalis are, are there, we normally use this formula moles equal concentration into volume. But volume should always be in decimeter cube. So concentration is one. The volume is five cm cube. So we have to convert into decimeter cube. So divide by 1000. So five divided by 1000, which is 0 0.005. So we have 0 0.005 moles of so these are the moles of HCl and the calcium carbonate which we have. Now we want to compare according to equation. If we have one mole of calcium carbonate, we should have two moles of HCl. So if we have 0 0.003 moles of calcium carbonate, how many moles of HCl should be there? X. We cross multiply. So how many moles which we need for a complete reaction? 0 0.006 moles of HCl are needed for a complete reaction. So we need 0 0.006, but we have only 0 0.005. So which reagent is a limiting reagent? We have zero, we need for a complete reaction, we need 0 0.006 moles, but we have only 0 0.005. So it means HCl is a limiting reagent. If HCl is a limiting reagent, it means calcium carbonate is in excess. So reagent in excess, that is calcium carbonate. And for a reason, for your reasoning, you can show, for a reasoning, you can show here you're working, like the ratio is one is to two. So if you have 0 0.003 moles of calcium carbonate, X moles of HCl are needed. So 0 0.006 moles of HCl are needed. So HCl is a limiting reagent. If one is a limiting reagent, the other one will always be an excess. Related to the limiting and excess reagents, sodium reacted with a sulfur to form sodium sulfide. 11.5 grams, 11.5 gram uh, sample of a sodium is reacted with 10 gram of a sulfur. All the sodium is reacted, but there was excess of sulfur. Like sulfur is excess reagent, like we have more than enough, and sodium is a limiting reagent. They already mentioned. Calculate the mass of a sulfur left unreacted. We want to find how much sulfur is left unreacted. We have 10 gram of sulfur, but that is in excess. That is more than what we need. So number of moles of sodium atom reacted. So how to get the number of the moles? We have the mass here. We have the mass of a sodium. So to get the moles, so moles equals mass in gram divided by relative uh, molar mass. So mass in gram is 11.5 and molar mass, you will use a periodic table. For sodium, it is 23 when you check the periodic table. So it will be 23 here. So 11.5 divided by 23, which is equals to half mole. So 0 0.5 moles of sodium will be there. The number of moles of sulfur atom reacted. How to get how many moles reacted? This 10 gram is in excess. So that's why we are using a ratio. The ratio between sodium and sulfur, that is 2 is to 1. If 2 moles of sodium, there will be 1 mole of sulfur. So 2 is to 1 is the ratio. If we have 0 0.5 moles of sodium, 
x moles of sulfur will be there we cross multiply so 2x is equals to 0.5 or x is equals to 0.25 so this will be 0.25 moles of sulfur will be there which are reacted what mass of a sulfur is reacted how to find the mass of sulfur reacted so we have the formula moles equal mass in gram divided by molar mass so moles which are reacted 0.25 mass of a sulfur we don't know and the molar mass of a sulfur you will use a periodic table sulfur is 32 so this is 32 this will be multiplied so 0.25 multiplied by 32 this will give you 8 grams of a sulfur reacted so we were having 10 gram of a sulfur initially we were having a 10 gram of a sulfur and out of 10, 8 gram is reacted. What mass of a sulfur will not react? So it will be 8 minus 10, which is equals to 2 grams. So 10 grams was extra and out of 10 grams, 8 gram of a sulfur reacted. So unreacted will be 2 grams. Mr. Uh, why it's 8? Why it is 8? How we get this 8? We will... First, we got the moles of sulfur reacted. How many moles of sulfur reacted? That is 0.25. These are the moles of sulfur which react. Okay. Then yes. we have the formula. We want to find the mass. So whenever we want to find the mass, the formula moles equal mass divided by molar mass. So moles of a sulfur which reacted 0.25. Mass of a sulfur, we don't know. And molar mass of a sulfur, you will check the periodic table. It is 32. So this 32 is divided, other side it will be multiplied. So 32 into 0 0.25 is 8. Yes, I understood, Mr. Okay. And so out of 10, if 8 gram is reacted, so unreacted will be 10 minus 8, which is equals to 2 grams. Another example, 3 grams of magnesium was added to 12 gram of ethanoic acid. The mass of 1 mole of magnesium is given 24 and mass of 1 mole of uh, ethanoic acid is given 60. So first step, whenever mass is given, anything is given, we'll find the moles. So how many moles of magnesium? Moles equal mass in gram, which is 3 divided by the molar mass, which is 24, according to, they've already mentioned here, so we don't have to check a periodic table. So 3 divided by 24, that is equals to 0 0.125. So 0.125 moles of magnesium are there. And to get the moles of ethanoic acid, The mass in gram is 12, according to question, and the molar mass is 60. So it will be 12 divided by 60, which is equals to 0.2. So we have zero point. This is, these are the moles which we have. Now what we will do? We will take a ratio between a magnesium and ethanoic acid. The ratio between them is 1 is to 2. Like if we have 1 mole of magnesium, there will be 2 moles of ethanoic acid. So if in the question we have 0 0.125 moles of magnesium, we should have x moles of ethanoic acid for a complete reaction. We cross multiply. So 0 0.125 multiplied by 2, which is 0.25. So x is equals to 0.25 moles of Ethanoic acid, CH3COH, are needed for a complete reaction. We need 0.25, but we have only 0.2. So we don't have 0.25, we have less than 0.25. It means ethanoic acid is, in, is a limiting reagent. So this will be a limiting reagent and magnesium is in excess. So in the question, 
Which one? Magnesium or ethanoic acid is in excess? So which one is in excess? So magnesium is in excess. 